I'm here for Babe Talk with Hawthorne Heights. We've got JT, Matt, and Mark with me. Yep. And they currently are on tour supporting their new album, Bad Frequencies, out next week, probably this week by the time we get this on the site. First off, how's tour been? It's been great so far. No, uh, no complaints. Uh, today was the warmest day we've had, which yeah. was nice. Got to walk around a little bit. We always like to come uh, to Brooklyn. Um, yeah, we don't we don't have any complaints. Normally we'd be complaining at this time of day, but it's been pretty easy. We've had some really uh, fun stops already because of the places that we like. Like last time we were in Portland, Maine, beautiful town, great crowd. Um, so I guess no complaints. The first whole question I have is, what difficulties have you guys had over the years retaining your sound in an ever-changing sonic environment? I think for better or for worse, we've always decided to be off our nights. Mm -hmm. uh, because we've been a band since 2004. There have been so many like different changes in the music scene. You know, one moment everything went neon. One moment everything went like super heavy, yeah. And then the next moment, you know, everything went pop punk. And now we hear there's an emo revival, but we never stopped doing it, so there was nothing to revive on our end. Yeah. Um, it's a good thing we didn't do keyboard break then. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Been a dark moment. Uh, but there's just been so many, so much stuff happened, and we feel the only way that you can kind of last is to continually be yourself, uh, for better or for worse. When, when we started the band, we weren't chasing a trend. There was no such thing as the emo, screamo thing happening at that point. Um, so we've just always been kind of true to ourselves. We want to write songs that have melody. Mm -hmm. um, we want to write songs that, that are heavy at times, um, that have uh, screaming when we want it to be there, not when we feel it has to be there. And we want it to be fast, fun, and energetic, and powerful. Uh, and we want the lyrics to be emotional, because that's what life is. And I totally agree. I mean, there are bands that stick around for as long as you guys have, and it's because this is your true authentic self. This is your authentic sound. You're not trying to be something. This is just who you guys are. So staying with the theme of who you guys are, being around for... Uh, uh, fifth, almost 15 years now. Almost 15 years. Yeah. Um, you just released your latest single, uh, Starlighter Echo Utah. Uh, can you tell us about the creation of the track and what the track means to you? Sure. Um, we, lyrically, I hate the winter because all of the bad shit happens when you're touring and when you're driving around in the snow. And uh, I wrote the lyrics after a pretty awful drive in, in Utah. That's why there's Echo Utah in the title. Um, and like, you know, it's one of those moments where you see your life flash before your eyes and it's like, fuck man, we're driving around out here just so we can play songs on our guitar and like sometimes it just gets a little too real. Um, but when we, you know, I've, I've written those lyrics down and when we came down to actually writing the song, like I was just thinking of summer. I want this to sound fun because it's about something that's so unfun. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted it to be the kind of the opposite of that, and um, you know, we just wanted to sound like uh, one of your favorite summers. We wanted to sound like a point in your life where you didn't have to worry about anything. You just hopped in the car, hung out with your friends, and uh, picked the destination, and just cranked up some songs. So I guess then, what would be your favorite song off of Bad Frequencies? That's probably different for all of us. Yeah. To be honest with you. Um, I'm digging on the title track for this. Yeah. Because we've, we've been performing that on tour, and it's, uh, it's quite a bit different from anything we've done before. It sounds like us, but definitely a little bit of a departure, too. I think I like Starlighter the best. Starlighter. Yeah. Sounds like a pop masterpiece. You know? <laughs> um, there's a lot of you know we we took so long making the record that we're for once we're kind of happy with 
off the songs and we've cut songs from the record that we wanted to keep on the record. So uh, we like them all. Um, the last track on the record is called Pills. It's, uh, it's about some pretty dark times in America, specifically in the Midwest. Um, but I really like that song because uh, I think it's about about some real stuff that people are going through and uh, I hope that when people hear it that it will kind of maybe it can help break them out of that somber. That, was, that song also is uh, probably the first time that we've ever like tried to achieve a tone for the album and actually got it. <laughs> Usually you like try to go like I want the guitar to sound like this and then you kind of get close-ish and you just go okay no time to go anymore. That one's like actually turned out how it was supposed to. So yeah. that's kind of cool. Um, so then on tour promoting the new album, moving away from which favorite song overall, what's your favorite song to play? To play, I think that we all we all we agonize over the set list and stuff like that. Um, because you know, we're a band that's been around for a long time. We have a lot of different albums. So we kinda that's one thing that we take out of the equation, our favorite songs. Yeah. We are solely trying to service people who are coming to the show because we appreciate the fact that they could be doing anything tonight, they could be spending their money on anything else. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're playing what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. That's most important to us. And you know, we like the the crowd reaction more than we like the personal satisfaction of playing of our favorite song that we wrote. That's kind of weird. We've played them all before. Yeah. <laughs> so, we know how they go. <laughs> so then, I assume it doesn't get tiring playing, you know, the fan favorites, like, oh, hi, it's for the lovers. No, like, sorry. Yeah, it doesn't get tiring because you see their reaction and they clearly want to hear it. And it's, it's, it's helped them either through something or they just generally enjoy it and it's a good time for them. So that's enough for us. There's somebody we met tonight uh, that's here and it's their first rock concert ever. Oh, wow. So... When you hear stuff like that, how can you be really bummed about playing a high school lover? You guys yeah. never been to a show, so and we are like we cool. are the one that he chose. Yeah, yeah. to <laughs> so, be his first show. Yeah, yeah, that's really impressive. Yeah. yeah. Um. So going back to bad frequencies, your last release was in 2015. How would you say the album compares to what you previously released? Do you see it as a continuation, as sort of a departure? Do you see it as... No, nah, it's, it's kind of a polar opposite, to be yeah. honest with you, because Hurt is about, like, growing up in the dark fall, winter period in the Midwest yeah. when there's no sunlight, it's freezing, the wind beats at you, and uh, it's about some, like, real-life dark personal experiences and stuff like that. Bad Frequencies is definitely wanting to run away from that. It's wanting to to, to chase uh, the youth that is no longer there. It's no longer supposed to be there. As you get a little bit older, you're supposed to grow up. But I don't really think that you have to. And, and it's, that's what it's about. It's about not having to grow up. Yeah. Um, Besides you guys have been around so long, and there's this ever-growing trend of anniversary tours and things like that. Do you see yourself taking part in that in the future? Nah, we already did it, and yeah. it took about three years of our lives. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a friend who came out to one of those. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was cool, and mm -hmm. we, we appreciate it, and we loved that the fans had a good time, but like, we couldn't release anything new because we couldn't play new songs. Um, so it just, it takes a lot out of the artist in that regard. So we were happy to do it the one time we did for the 10 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like a and, once in a lifetime, once in a... Yeah. yeah, I mean, if we make it to 20 years, maybe. But, <laughs> I don't see know. a 16 year yeah. anniversary show. Yeah, yeah, those ones are always so <laughs> odd. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. it's been a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 17 yeah. years. They're cool, but they just take away from what you're actually trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it is Record Store Day today. Yeah. So on the topic of records, what's your favorite record at the moment? Or, you know, what was, you know, a uh, record that really inspired you to get into music? Mine, oh yeah, I have two. Mine was 
Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness okay. by uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, when I heard that, like, it came at a point in my life, you know, I was in high school, and uh, all the imagery and everything, the music videos, everything was so badass that I was like, man, that is what, like, being a rock star is, that. Um, and I just thought it was super cool. But my first, like, I guess, inspiring musical memory was, my family was not musical at all. It was very rare that my mom would put, like, records on. But she used to play uh, Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen at times awesome. growing up. And I don't know why she really liked that album, because she never really talked about it or anything. Um, but I just fell in love with Bruce Springsteen because of that. And uh, it's always been inspiring for me because of that. My first, uh, first record that really got me to music was Faith Towards Angel Dust. But I didn't really want to be in a band. I was just like, oh, you just cool now, you know? Yeah. And then uh, Nirvana's Nevermind was the first band that kind of made me want to be a band and be in a band and do the do the thing and get a guitar. Um, and then uh, the band Face to Face, their record Big Choice is really what got me into like punk rock and playing more type, this type of music. Uh, for me, probably Nirvana Nevermind made me want to play guitar. Um, Screeching Weasel Kill the Musicians made me want to play like punk. Stuff. Play the system. Um, yeah. Uh, my favorite record right now is this this dude called Helios. The album's called You. It's good. I just found out about it. it's like five years old. So I'm late to the party. Then I found out he makes iPhone commercials, so I'm really late to the party. <laughs> but that's what I was doing. That's me point. though. I was yeah, like, yeah. Like I'll discover and I was like, oh, they're the one that did a commercial a <laughs> yeah. couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So my final question is. Where do you see the future of Hawthorne Heights going? Uh, you know, what sort of direction do you want to take? The immediate future is we're on tour till like July 9th. Yeah. So, <laughs> we, it's really hard to get that out of your head at the moment. Yeah. Um, we have some fun stuff that we're working on for the fall and for the winter. So really, all we're focusing on right now is pushing uh, bad frequency as far as it can go because we haven't released a, a new full length since 2013. Um, and you know, sometimes it takes a little work to, to get music to be where it should be. So, you know, we're happy to just be out here putting in the miles and playing to every single person we can and hopefully the shows keep getting bigger and bigger and we keep getting better and better at playing these songs and by the end really it'll... Yeah. So we want to take it as far as we can. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited to listen to it. Alright, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.